Hi, and welcome to our screencast on buoyancy in the Mix and Flow of Matter unit. Okay. We define buoyancy as the tendency of an object to float when placed in a fluid. Okay, so how well or will it float when placed in a fluid? Now, is there a connection between density and buoyancy? I think that's a good question. Do you think there's a connection between density and buoyancy? Well, exploring buoyancy a little more. When an object is placed in a liquid, and let's say water, the force of gravity will pull down on that substance, right? Makes sense. When the liquid pushes up towards the same object, this opposite force is called the buoyant force. So gravity wants to pull down, the liquid wants to push up, and depending on which is stronger, you will sometimes sink or float. Okay? If the liquid is more dense than the object, the object will float. Styrofoam. Okay, styrofoam placed in water. The styrofoam will float because water is more dense. The push up is greater. If the object is more dense than the liquid, the object will sink. A steel bolt in water. Okay, the push up is not strong enough. Gravity will pull down because the object is more dense, therefore it sinks in the water. Okay. Now we see this with large cargo cargo ships. They actually sink a little bit when they travel from oceans to bays and large rivers. Well, why is that? Why would a ship travel higher in one body of water and lower in another? Well, if we think back to density, okay, and we think salt water versus fresh water, we remember that they sink because fresh water is less dense than salt water. So the boat actually travels in different densities at different heights. Okay? Density changes when you tr also travel between warm and cold waters. And on the sides of ships, you'll see something called a plimsoll line. And it's painted on the hull. And it can show where the boat should be um, uh, sitting in the water, depending on its temperature of water and whether it's fresh and salt water. Okay, so you can see tropical fresh water up here. The boat would float much lower than, let's say, uh, salt water in the summer, right here. Okay, and even it float even higher in winters in the North Atlantic. Why is that? Well, this is cold salt water, so it's even smaller spaces between the particles. Okay, and these lines just tell us where the boat should be floating in different water conditions. Okay, buoyancy and uh, density also goes with uh, uh, submarines. Okay, to control a, a submarine's buoyancy, it has something called ballast tanks. And these ballast tanks can alternately fill with water or air depending on where it wants to go. When it's on the surface, the ballast tanks are full of air because air is less dense than the water. But as it wants to dive, it fills those ballast tanks with water and the submarine will sink. Okay? Air compressed air is maintained on board or, or put on board so that if they want to rise again, they force the water out and up they come. Okay, so buoyancy also it works within its own. Uh, buoyancy also works with submarines. That's what I'm trying to say. Hot air balloons depend on density of air, because hot air has lower density than colder air. Therefore, the hot air will rise, allowing these balloons to travel upwards. Okay, that's why you always see hot air balloons uh, also in the in the morning, because the air is cooler, and it's easier for the balloons to rise when the air is cooler, because the hot air will rise faster. You don't see them much in the afternoon when the air is warmer. Early airships actually called zeppelins also use the idea of low density air such as uh, hydrogen to travel across the Atlantic. They actually travel from Europe to North America and they use low density air called hydrogen inside of them because hydrogen is less dense than, than air. Now the problem with using hydrogen was that uh, it's combustible and uh, if you've ever heard of the story of the Hindenburg disaster uh, that's what happened here. So they stopped using those trans transatlantic uh, routes with those zeppelins very quickly when they realized the dangers of hydrogen. Okay, so there's just some uh, quick definitions and quick examples of buoyancy and what exactly buoyancy is. Hopefully that makes sense to you and if it doesn't, as always, bring those questions to class and we'll discuss more in class.